Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at logarithmic regression, or in this instance, the primary logarithmic regression band fit to non-bubbled data. So if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and check out the Telegram channel here, which you can find a link to in the description below. Um, if you want to join a community of over 2,500 people uh, with some really good really good discussions about these charts, then check that out. And I should remind you again, this is not financial advice. This is just uh, me looking at, at cryptocurrency from a mathematical point of view. So let's go ahead and jump in. So uh, the reason why we're, we're why we're looking at this chart, so I, I published a video on this chart maybe a couple weeks ago or so. And I actually got a lot of questions about it because I said something in the video that a lot of people were somewhat confused by. So I want to go through systematically what I mean and show you how mathematically it seems like everything lines up almost perfectly um, from a mathematical point of view. Not a fundamental point of view, but just from a pure mathematical point of view, how it seems like or appears that things line up in a way that is very eloquent. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, I took you know what I deemed non-bubble data, uh, which you can see highlighted in red. I fit that to a logarithmic regression curve, which takes the form 10 to the power a times the ln of x minus b, and all of that is, is so it's 10 raised to all of that. Um, so I fit those coefficients. This is the, the fit I got, and uh, let's just go ahead and, and dive in to what the question was. So the first thing I want to do to to answer this question because of the confusion last time is I want to extend the chart. So the reason we're extending the chart is because we're talking about a theoretical peak of our next cryptocurrency market cycle. Um, and the next one, if you follow this channel, you would, you, would, you would be aware that as far as I'm concerned, the math points to a, a cycle peak in, uh, in, in, in a few years. So 2023 plus or minus you know some some tolerance around there but certainly it does not suggest a, a cycle peak in 2021 which is what a lot of people think um, but if if you if you look at the data for what it is it, it does suggest a lengthening cycle so with that said the re we're going to go ahead and extend the logarithmic regression curve out to you know let's say the middle of 2023 let's just extend it out that far Obviously, the peak could happen, you know, earlier than that. Obviously, it could happen in 2024. Um, but we're just gonna we're gonna look at say the middle of 2023 to give us an idea of 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 where we would be. Now, the question stems from this chart. So, in the last video on this on this information, I talked about how if you draw a trend line, um, our favorite imaginary line, and extend this out, it might give you a a a, um, a difference, like say a percent difference, between the price and the primary logarithmic regression line. So we're just talking about what is the, 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 the percent difference between this point, these points, the price, and this primary regression band. So if we can identify a trend in that, then maybe it'll help us determine a cycle peak, if that makes sense. So here, we have, you know, we see the trend line and we see that each cycle peak, the price, so the difference between the price and the log line, that percent difference, is getting less. And that is also backed up with other things that show reduced macro level volatility, diminishing returns, and obviously lengthening cycles. And I said, the, the question comes up because I said, well, if you extend this line out, it'll be, you know, a few hundred percent. I think I actually said 600 percent, which is an overestimation as to where it would be. I think it's 600% in 2021. So if it were to peak in 2021, then maybe it would be around 600%. But if it peaks in say 2023, it would be different. So let's extend it out so we can better understand where the trend might, where the math leads us. So if you extend this trend line out, um, and let's say we, we put it over here. Okay, so let's say the earliest the peak could happen would be the end of 2022 and the latest, you know, maybe sometime in, in 2024. I don't think it would happen at the end of 2024, um, but if you were to look at, say, maybe like, 
you know, I, I would say 2023 plus or minus, you know, eight months, something like that. You know, I, I don't know for sure, but I think it's, it's, it's most likely going to be in this window over here, not in this window. So not between 2021 and 2023. I think it's going to be between mostly, say, 2023 and 2024 sometime in that time frame. If we're lucky, maybe the end of 2022, but it, it seems to be more, more likely than not that it'll be some somewhere in um, you know 2023, maybe 2024. Um, but if if it is, if it is somewhere over in this region, then what would the percent difference between the price and the log line if it continues this trend be? So we look at this red line, and you can see that in this window, it's a 300 to 200 percent difference. So here you can see it. So if it if it happens, say the end of 2022 then it might be a 300% difference. If it happens, say, the end of 2024, then it might be a 200% difference. But why does that matter? Does the percent difference necessarily indicate a different price? It doesn't necessarily indicate a different price because if you go back and look at the logarithmic regression line, it's always increasing. Now, we know that logarithmic regression curves each market cycle they have to be refit because if you don't, then you're going to get an over prediction. So you want to continuously refit them because the growth is decaying. Um, but if you use the if you use all the data we have, it can at least give us a fairly good estimate as to what the next cycle is going to do. So, with that said, if you look here, out in say the middle of 2023, the fair valuation on the trend line would be a value of $40,000 if this growth were to continue. Clearly there's always that chance that it does not continue. It's possible that we fall below the regression line. Remember it's just an imaginary line at the end of the day. All it is is a mathematical equation fit to non-double data. But let's suppose that it is somewhat reasonably accurate even if there's some you know, tolerance on this, and I've even tried to include a tolerance by drawing a, a you know, a gray shaded region um, beside this line, um, which you can see extends down a few thousand dollars and up a few thousand dollars because our, our motto here is what is a few thousand among friends? I mean, we're not, we're not here to pinch pennies. We're, we're here to look at the macro level uh, scale. So if it is a 40, a forty thousand dollar fair valuation now obviously that could be thirty thousand dollars it could be fifty thousand dollars depending on exactly what the price of bitcoin does by this time but if the fair valuation of bitcoin is forty thousand dollars and it's in the middle of 2023 then we might expect a 200 to 300 percent difference between the price and the fair valuation if there is a speculative bubble so with that said you can imagine if the price is $40,000, a 100% difference would be putting the peak at $80,000. A 200% difference would put it at, um, at $120,000. And a 300% difference would put it at $160,000. Um, so if it's, you know, it, it might be somewhere in between. Uh, this is why I typically say that I think the peak will likely be just north of six figures. Um, potentially, you know, 120,000, 140,000, somewhere along those lines is where I think it might happen. Now, with that said, there's obviously chances that it doesn't break six figures. You know, psychologically that could affect things. Um, but then again, it you know, Bitcoin went to 20,000 despite 10,000 being a psychological barrier. You could obviously argue there were external factors. I'm not going to get into that now in this video. Um, but regardless, you know, if, if, the, if these patterns continue, then it puts us at a valuation of 200 to 300% over the fair valuation trend line, and the fair valuation trend line would be at $40,000. So if the fair valuation trend line is at $40,000, then the peak, the speculative bubble, would come up above $100,000 if this mathematical pattern continues and we see something that looks like this where it goes back up um, and then we repeat the cycle and then continue on chugging along um, going into another bear market that would be that would likely encompass two halvings um, I love saying that just because it, it really uh, it rubs people the wrong way when I when I have the audacity to suggest that one market cycle might contain more than one having 
but I think, you know, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Time will elucidate the truth. You know, we can argue about it all night long. Um, but, you know, if this plays out like I think it's going to, then it's going to become fairly obvious sooner rather than later because we're already in the second quarter of 2020 and, and Bitcoin is, from what I can tell, is not following that four-year cycle because if it were, it certainly, you know, it would be, it would already be above the 20-week moving average and, and really chugging along to, um, uh, to, to better valuations now and ultimately it would need to get to twenty thousand uh, dollars sometime in 2021 for that four-year cycle theory to even have a chance I think of being remotely correct um, and even if it does get to twenty thousand dollars by the beginning of 2021 the move from twenty thousand to a hundred thousand could still take two or three years um, and you know, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I tend to think that, and I've mentioned it in many videos, that I think that 2019 and 2020 and even early 2021 are going to be the best accumulation years of this cycle. So if your primary, if your primary goal is to accumulate Bitcoin um, and you're looking to do it at a low risk level, which I also cover in other videos, then you know, 2019, 2020, even some of 2021, those are likely going to be the times to do it because you want to be accumulating, um, sorry, not financial advice, I want to be accumulating when we're in the primary logarithmic regression band. So in this region, okay, this is where I like to accumulate. Over here, we were there, we're in it over here. Um, you can see that in this, in the last cycle, we were above that line and below that line. Earlier in, in this market cycle, in 2019, we, we were above the line for the most part. Now we've come below the, the line into the, into the lower band, the lower band part. But we, we bounced off of it and we're back to that center line. So if, you are, if you're dumb money, then you're not paying attention to any of this stuff. You are, you know, you're, you're just constantly talking about, you know, when is Bitcoin going to go to the moon, expecting it's going to happen in 2021. You might get frustrated when that doesn't happen, capitulate, um, and right when you're capitulating because you think that, okay, well, if the four-year cycle is not correct, then Bitcoin is dead. Um, and then, you know, that, that's probably what's going to happen, and, and many of those people might capitulate out of the market to go somewhere else, and then, you know, they might get left behind in terms of actually seeing those those better returns to come in 2022 and 2023, maybe even 2024. Um, but 2021, as we've mentioned, certainly does not seem to be the time that Bitcoin will see this new, um, you know, this paradigm shift again. And there are going to be some people out there that have a hard time wrapping their head around the fact that how could Bitcoin have a fair valuation of $40,000. And I will remind you that, you know, going from 10 cents to $20,000 is way more impressive than going from $6,000, $7,000 up to $40,000. Okay, for a fair valuation. And this isn't even the speculative bubble. This is just a fair valuation trend line that typically shows the support region for where historically Bitcoin finds its support when it's in a bear market. So with all that said, um, I hope that this clears things up for the people that had a lot of questions because I did get a lot of questions on what I meant by this percent difference here. Um, what did I mean by, like, what does that mean? A lot of people thought it meant, oh, it means the percent difference between the price today. It's not true. It refers to the percent difference between the logarithmic regression line, the fair valuation, in the year that I was talking about. So in 2023, it's the fair valuation um, mark, and then the percent difference between the price and that log line would be two to 300% if it continues this pattern. And here you can quite eloquently see um, the, the lengthening cycles. You know, this is a, a shorter time period. It gets longer and then it continues to get longer, putting say at the next cycle peak, um, maybe in 2031 or even maybe later. Um, people don't wanna hear it, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this isn't a, this isn't just a shill Bitcoin channel. It's let's look at the let's look at what the data says to try to understand and and squeeze out from the data whatever patterns we can find. You know what do these patterns suggest? How can we use this to our advantage? 
And, you know, it can also help us prepare for what's to come. Because if you're mentally prepared for a lengthening cycle, then you're not worried about day-to-day -day price movements. You have your eyes on the longer-term picture. You have your eyes on the prize. And it's, it's far out there, but it's not out of reach. And so um, we take this in stride. We know the risks we take when investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because it obviously is not a sure thing. But for those of you who enjoy, um, you know, taking that risk and, and you believe that Bitcoin is going to continue rising in its valuation, then let's at least look to see what historical data tells us so that we can at least inform our investments um, in, a, in a better way than just doing it blindly. Um, because someone tells us it's a four-year cycle. That, I think, basically will wrap up the video. So again, if you guys like the content, uh, we do try to provide these custom types of graphs and data science for not only Bitcoin, but other coins as well. And I also look at other markets, um, traditional markets, um, etc. Uh, so if you guys like the content, again, subscribe to, to the channel. Turn your notifications on. If you want to discuss this stuff, I'm pretty active in the Telegram channel. We have 2,500 members. When we get to 3,000 members, we'll, I'll be finding a third admin to help control the channel because I, I want to keep it focused on what you know what what, what is good to talk about um, and not let it get too far off topic. Uh, so we have good administrators now. We'll be looking to add a third one. And basically, I'm just going to be looking to see, you know, um, the people that are, you know, the, the people that are active in the channel and, and, and just, you know, contributing to the channel. Those are the people that I want to be the admins and, and to, to help, you know, be a part of the community as it grows. So with all that said, you know, I, I would love it to have everyone subscribe and join the Telegram channel. If you want to support the content, um, support what I'm doing, uh, then you can check out patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. Um, or if you'd rather pay with uh, fiat, you can check out the description below. Um, and the reason you might want to do that is because I do publish a weekly newsletter um, and uh, it will give you risk updates and, and other types of updates, even like logarithmic regression and traditional markets. So that comes out um, tentatively. It's coming out every Sunday. So I've, I've published two so far with a third one to come out um, this Sunday. So today. Um, depending on where you are in the world, I guess. Uh, but it's, it'll be Sunday for me when it comes out. Um, and then also, I, I do I, I do publish a lot of other things for people who follow the private or the premium content. I, I publish. Um, uh, I have a Google Sheets that that shows you the risk levels at different price points, and we look at fair valuation and undervaluation and overvaluation of the total cryptocurrency market cap. I even have something for Tesla on the Google Sheet, as well as um, some other things. So. Um, if you guys want to join that and we have a private telegram channel for that group, uh, then check out patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. If that's not your style, which I understand, uh, subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.